All right, so I'm in the Millionaire Real Estate Agent book today, and I'm on pages 306 through 309, and we're going to have a conversation on energy and focus. Five main points I want you to write down. Number one, high achievement requires big energy. High achievement requires big energy. Number two, there are five key areas of energy focus that drive our success. One, spiritual energy. Two, physical energy. Three, emotional energy. Four, mental energy. And five, business energy. The fourth point that I have for you today is time block your morning routine. <clears throat> time block your morning routine. And then number five, commit to learning based living. Commit to learning based living. All right, I'm going to close with a recap of those five points. So if you missed anything, no sweat, we're coming back to it. On page 306 of the Millionaire Real Estate Agent, here's what Gary has to say on focus and energy. The fact that your ability to maintain your focus at a high level over time will largely depend on whether or not you can stay consistently enthusiastic and energized. The fact is, let me, reset, let me say this again because I said it wrong. The fact is that your ability to maintain your focus at a high level over time, the fact is that your ability to maintain your focus at a high level over time will largely depend on whether or not you can consistently, you can stay consistently enthusiastic and energized. You know, it's interesting that that's the conversation, right? And if you can't tell, I can because I, I'm, I'm experiencing it. If you can't tell, I'm having a hard time. I lost my focus three times reading that. And it's important, stay focused no matter what. Gary goes on to say, high achievement requires big energy. Big energy. But paradoxically, achievement can also be a source of energy and enthusiasm. So which comes first, the energy or the achievement? Honestly, this is Gary talking to you. He says, honestly, I don't know. I don't know which one comes first. What I do know is that you can't reach big goals without a big sustained effort. You cannot reach large goals without a big sustained effort. And a big sustained effort requires big sustained energy. High achievers have big energy. The trick is learning how to get it and keep it. Life is energy. For all its applications and complexities, when you boil Einstein's E equals MC squared down to the basics, all it says is that everything is energy. What you do with your life and how you do it either adds energy or subtracts energy from your life. So think about it like this. We learn in bold that you cannot create energy. You can either transfer it or transform it. Everything you do is either bringing your energy up or it's bringing your energy down. The people you surround yourself with is either bringing your energy up or bringing your energy down. What you choose to focus on, what people are saying, and you choose to pay attention to it, or you choose to ignore it, it's just noise, brings your energy up or brings your energy down. If, so, if you're surrounded by people who love you and support you, it brings your energy up. If you're surrounded by people who don't like you, for whatever reason that can may be, it can bring your energy down, but it doesn't have to. It's only going to bring your energy down if you choose to focus on it. 
you can choose to focus it out. There are some very specific things you can do to increase your energy and thereby maintain your focus. Now, the five areas of energy. There are five areas in which I, I need energy. There are five areas in which you need energy. Most likely, they are much the same for you. I need spiritual energy, physical energy, emotional energy, mental energy, and business energy. My simple formula to... My simple formula is to block off my time such that I can be assured I will be able to pull a lot of energy into my life every day. And this is your morning routine. It's critically important that you block time in order to build energy into your life. And it's important that you do it first thing in the morning. It's important that you do it first thing in the morning, because number one, that's the time you control the best. That's the time that's going to be least interrupted. And if I'm creating energy for the day, it doesn't do me, it doesn't have the same effect if I block off time in the afternoon to create energy. I want to start the day by creating energy. I want to put gas in the gas tank before I go on the journey, not when I reach my destination. What good is it doing me if I do that? Block time in the morning in order to create energy. My energy routine is designed with an 11 a.m. time in mind. So my morning routine comes from Gary Keller. I've shared it with you many, many times, and I'll share it with you again. First of all, get out of bed early. Now, what's early? I would start at 5 a.m., some days I wish I could start at 5 a.m. like today, <laughs> and I just wake up earlier, so I start earlier. But for all of you, at least start your day by 5 a.m. Block time to build spiritual energy. Pray, meditate, read the Bible. Block time to build physical energy. Exercise, go for a walk, go for a run, go to the gym, work out. Block time for emotional energy. You know, it's interesting. I've read this book many times, and I heard for the very first time today in reading this book, the reason it's important to build that emotional energy first thing in the morning, even if it's five minutes where we hug our children and we let them know that we love them, we hug our spouse, our partner, and we let them know that we love them. The reason it's important to build that emotional energy in the morning is because you're, you're creating that energy that carries you through the day. Most people save emotional energy for evenings and weekends. And it's important that you're blocking time to create emotional energy in the morning. You may think it's a small thing just to wrap your arms around somebody and say, I love you. I appreciate you. I value you. And I promise you, most days, I appreciate it. If Monica starts my day out, if Lacey starts my day out with, I love you. I'm up reading every morning when Lacey leaves for school or Lacey leaves for work and every single day, Lacey, I love you. Have a great day. I'm not going to miss it. And you may think it's not that big of a deal. And some days it's not, it's just routine. Hey, I love you. Have a great day. And I promise you, I needed to hear that this morning. I needed to hear Dad, I love you. I appreciate you. I value you. At a time when maybe not everybody loves me, <laughs> maybe they don't like me, to hear I love you, I appreciate you, I value you, priceless. It's important. Block time for mental energy. Holy cow, guys, read. Read books. The average, if you look at the most successful people, they have things in common. And one of the things they have in common is they start the day early. 
You want to be successful. You want to make a lot of money. You want to be wealthy. Well, start the day early. For no other reason, just start the day early because you know that puts you in a group of people who are very successful and very wealthy. The other thing they have in common is they read. You look at the most wealthy people in the world. You look at the most successful people in the world. They read an average of two to three books a month. Read. Read a lot. And guys, I'm all for books on tape. I'm all for driving down the road and listening to a book. And I'm telling you that doesn't replace having a book in your hands with a highlighter in the other hand, with a pen in the other hand, taking notes, read books, take notes, suck the marrow out of this thing. It's important. Okay. Gary goes on to say, page 308, top of the page. He finishes his morning routine, his morning energy routine, by being in the, in the office between 8 a.m. and 9 a.m. And then he goes on to say, I then plan and calendar my day for mental energy and spend my first most energized hours in the office working hard on guess what? Lead generation. Holy cow, what a shocker. And recruiting talent. You know, I'm in the lead generation recruiting talent business. And all of you who are selling real estate are in the lead generation recruiting talent business. Now, you may think or you may say, John, wait a minute. I'm a, I'm a single agent. Uh, I'm just getting started. Why would I be recruiting talent? Because you begin with the end in mind. You're going to need an administrative assistant. Eventually, you're going to need two administrative assistants and three administrative assistants. You're going to need buyer agents and showing assistants. Start looking for them now. Don't wait until you need them to look for them. Always look for talent. And holy cow, if you find talent, find someplace in your world for talent. Because people will change everything. If you listen to Ben Kenny, Ben Kenny will tell you when he hits the ceiling in an E to P conversation, the solution, the breakthrough is always one of two things. Number one, people. In other words, who do I need? to hire in order to break through in order to break through this ceiling. And the second thing is systems. What system do I need to implement in order to break through this ceiling? So Gary says he spends the first two hours of every day, the first three hours of every day in lead generation and recruiting talent for business energy. And he says, I never slack off before 11 a.m. Now, he wrote this book in 2003, and he wrote this book in a market that was improving. The market was uh, getting better. It was a good market. It was a seller's market. And Gary would tell you today that two-hour time period is not enough. That two-hour time period today needs to be three hours, not two hours. Now, recap. Five major things that I want you to focus on when you're having an energy-focused conversation. High achievement requires big energy. <clears throat> if you like sports like I do, and you pay attention to things that are going on, then you'll notice some pretty interesting things. And there was a few NFL games this weekend where the losing team, <clears throat> you could see it on the sideline. It was an energy suck. You could just see from the facial expressions of, uh, and I'm not going to mention any teams because I don't want to make anybody mad at me. You can just see the facial expressions of the, of the team on the sideline that was losing if if you didn't know anything about football, if you didn't even have an opportunity to see the scoreboard, all you would have to do is look at two si each sideline and you would be able to tell which team is winning, right? Energy. The team that's winning has amazing high energy. And it's important that you 
keep that energy even when things aren't going well. It's important for me that I show up today, especially important for me today that I show up with high energy because never losing. That's got to be my mindset. It has to be your mindset. <clears throat> everything is energy. When you realize that everything is energy, then you realize that everything you do affects everything around you, either in a positive way or a negative way. Think of it like this. Your thoughts, your energy, they, they have a radiating force that goes out from you in about a six foot circle around you. And all you have to do is walk in the room pissed off and people are going to know it. You don't have to say a word. And they know immediately that you're angry. What's up? You walk in a room excited and they're going to know it. They can feel it. You can feel the energy of those who are around you. I want to read a really cool book about this. It's a really old book, by the way. It's The Celestine Prophecy. Mm -hmm. And in The Celestine Prophecy, um, it it's, talks about people are energy. And it talks about as people evolve, they become eventually 100% energy. It's a really cool book. And whether you believe what it's sharing or not, it is kind of wild. And it actually says that when you evolve at a high level and you can see energy, you can look at people and see light around them. And you can see bright colors or dark colors or different colors based on the energy that is within that person. It's kind of cool. You should read that book. All right. There are five key areas of energy to focus on spiritual energy, physical energy, emotional energy, mental energy, and business energy. Number four, time block your morning routine. You know, the way that we create energy is by time blocking to create energy. The way that we create energy is by time blocking to create energy. And number five, commit to being learning based. You know, it's interesting to me when somebody says, I don't need to attend that class, I've already attended it. Or I don't need to read that book, I've already read it. Or I don't need to go to that seminar, I've already gone. Well, I don't need to go to bold. I've already done bold, right? Here's, here's my closing point. One of the ways that we maintain energy in our life throughout our entire life is be learning-based. My goal is that I am reading, taking notes, writing in my journal, and learning right up until the day when I'm done. And when I mean done, I mean done, done. <laughs> In other words, when I take my last breath, I'm going to be learning. Something in that room is important for me to learn. And I'm going to learn right up until the very last minute. So at a blink of an eye, I'm here. I'm not here. My very first conversation with God, when Jesus, when I see him in heaven is, hey, let me share with you what I learned right before I died. <laughs> Really ask the question, what was number three? Yeah. Emotional energy. Emotional energy. Oh, so you All right, talk to me. What'd you guys hear? Other than you can clearly tell that I'm not feeling great, right? But don't worry, I'm good. Energies. Hi. <laughs>